Okay, here's my 2004 F-150 with the overdrive servo snap ring problem where you lose overdrive. And uh, I lost third gear too, and that's where I noticed it slipped into neutral going into third gear. And then I realized if I turned off overdrive, uh, just as if I was towing a trailer, then I'd regain third gear. And I drove around like that for a few weeks until I got the parts. So I just want to share my experience here real quick with, uh, with what's going on here. I know if you look on YouTube, there's a couple of YouTube videos. One is uh, Ford Tech Makuloko has a great video on exactly how to do this, so I won't try to repeat that. I uh, just want to share my experience real quick with it. I did this in my uh, my tiny garage here. I got a, an inch on each side. Uh, yeah, first I just uh, sucked out some of the fluid through the dipstick there, and uh, just to make it a little less messy. Didn't make it a whole whole lot better, but it made it a bit messy taking up less messy taking off the pan. Uh, I'll just slip my gear real quick. Okay, here's my overdrive servo and the two snap rings on each side here, they broke off and I'll show in a second one of them laying in the pan. I haven't found the other one yet. Uh, and then I looked at the reverse servo and I thought it had broken too. If you notice, the snap ring is a little bit different than normal snap rings. It just kind of ends in a kind of an angled spot where you, if you need to take it out, you just slip something in there and pull on it. But that's normal, so that's fine. And then also on mine, the, uh, that's the 2-3 accumulator. When I pulled off the valve body, uh, the spring and the little retainer clip on there fell off. And the spring was broken. So I'll show that in a second too. Otherwise, it, uh, everything else on here looks fairly normal. Okay, we'll take a look at what you know here. Here's the little clip, the end of the snap ring that broke off one side, and there'll be one exactly the same somewhere in the valve body once I take it off here. And then this is the 2-3 uh, the accumulator. This just, it actually, there's no snap ring or anything. This just slides right in and is held by these little, little tabs that when you put it back in, you have to kind of bend these little tabs to make it tighter, and then it should just stick in there. Uh, and here's the broken spring. Obviously, I have to get that new part. Uh, maybe I can put a part number in the thing when I find out what the part is. Um, this uh, plastic piece that goes across. Maybe I'll give a good zoom here of the tabs because that's the only really tricky spot. I know this... Uh, the only part that really stuck was this. Right in the middle of this where there's three, three little electro electrical things there. That really got uh, sticky. And it wasn't so much this tab you see here you have to put a screwdriver in this little hole here and just push out so this so you can get a zoom in on the other side here it's not really a good focus but you can see it's just a tab and if you put a screwdriver here and push that way you can just pull up but you had to really wiggle it. it it was really stuck the other ones came off not too bad um but yeah, I just use this little, just the little guy here and just slide it in right in there. And then you push this way, you go that way. Not too hard though. They're actually really weak. I was surprised how kind of weak they are. Just very light pressure and then wiggle and jiggle until this thing comes up. Uh, what else is valve body? I'll take it apart and uh, I'll add to the video once I do that. Um, a lot of people are having a problem with... Uh, Putting these bolts, there's only two size bolts here. There's long ones that go in anywhere on this plate, and you can tell where they were because there's little marks, and you can see there's no marks on some of these holes. I was worried about not remembering where they went, but it's no problem because the the long ones go in here, and there's marks to show where they go, and the shorter ones go onto the valve body that's below this plate. Uh, you don't need to take off this bolt, which holds on these solenoids or whatever they are. Um, and then they, it can just stay there. Some people take that off. Uh, what else? Oh yeah, some people also take off these other flatter bolts. You don't need to do that. You can just leave those because we're going to be flipping it over and removing this side to see what's, to see where that little clip went. And most likely it fell. I can't remember where. I think it's one of these holes that sit above where the the servo sits and I think it falls into one of these and stops the 
the solenoid thing from moving, but I'll add to the video in a second. And I'll just go back to this for a second just to show you the rest of the holes in case you don't find any other good videos on the web. But uh, the first clip, here's the piece here. So on this side, there's one clip right there. And it's just a little tab that clips over this. You just get a little screwdriver, pull the tab off, and then this side comes up. And then do these ones real careful because they're close together. So this one here is right there on the end. And this side. Oh yeah, it's right over here. You can see it. There's three holes. It's the one on the right. And you can see the little tab below. Let's see if we flip it around here. I don't know if you can see that tab. There it is, kind of. You just put a screwdriver in there. And then the one on the end, you can see the three holes, and it's the top one. There's a little, you can see that tab down below. You put a screwdriver and push on that tab. So that was the, the trickiest part because it's up, si up inside there with the stuff dripping down on you. And it's kind of, you can't get your face in there to actually look where those tabs are. So it, I found that the most tricky part so far. I uh, just took off the plate and the uh, the two gaskets on each side of the plate and it's just uh, these four bolts, these four bolts, I think they're 10 millimeters and one over here. And that was it. And I uh, took it off careful because I'm going to reuse it because uh, I live in Canada and uh, every single part seems to be way more than the States. I know uh, the, uh, the snap rings for the servo cost me uh even though they were 378 each i think i had to buy eight coming at eight in a package so it was 35 bucks with tax and then i don't know what other fee was on there uh and this gasket i don't know how much it was but i had to get a filter and i know rock auto had it in the states for five bucks and i could have got it with 20 bucks shipping or something so i had to pay 35 bucks for a, a filter and uh not sure what that spring is going to cost yet so yeah Living in Canada, we got to pay a few more bucks, so I try to keep it down to a minimum. I was just going to show where the balls go in here, just uh, in case somebody drops some out and needs to see them. There is a diagram somewhere online, but just in case uh, you want to see quick, there's, uh, there's one. One right there. One right there. Uh, one right here. Uh, one right there. What are we at? Four. One, two, three, four. So this is five. Uh, six, seven, and eight, just in case they fall out. But otherwise, there's a di diagram online somewhere. I'm going to try to keep them in while I look for that little, uh, little clip that's lost in here. Also, uh, interesting, I just found a little screen, right, sitting loose in here. I know we're looking at, uh, videos online there's supposed to be a screen somewhere in here that you can just throw out but it's more of a cube shaped like this with four sides more or less and you just toss it uh, apparently it's a factory thing that you don't need or you can put it back in whatever but i just found this and i have not seen this on any videos and it was just sitting loosely in this little compartment here so i'm going to uh probably throw that out unless i can find somewhere where that's supposed to be but there's no way it should be just sitting in there i think i found a little piece of the retaining clip like this one that's the one side that was just sitting on the on the top of this thing before so i think i found the other one it's right so now if you look at the here's the overdrive servo and you can push it here to see if it moves it doesn't really move that much so i think it is right in here I don't know if you can see that piece right there. Looks like it's jammed in there. I'm going to uh, see if I can remove it and see if that's what it is. It's hard to tell, really hard to tell, but it's the only thing I can see out of place. Yeah, there it is. Can I focus on it? I don't know. It's the same double end to that, and it was... Right, I think that's the spot it was in. And you can see now, which way, how do I make this open? There. It was actually open and jammed in there. And as soon as I popped it out, the servo bounced back to where it was supposed to go. 
So that's what happened. And that's generally, it gets stuck. I mean, every single one I've ever seen gets stuck somewhere, somewhere in here. Hmm. And I thought I could get away with uh, not removing the little balls here. But uh, with the map, it's pretty easy where they go back in. I had tilted it about this far, and actually I thought I'd get away with it, but actually one rolled out. So then I ended up just tipping it over and draining it, which makes it a lot easier anyway, and I can look for other stuff. But also this thing fell out, which I haven't seen on a video yet. I'm assuming it goes right here. It's the only spot I can see. So I'll try to find that on a video just to make sure. I don't want to just jam something back in for fun, but if I have to, I will, because it looks the same both ways and it it's the only place it can go so guess I should add now that I found out what this is it's a solenoid screen and I guess it does go right there most people's it's in there and it doesn't fall out mine fell out I guess it jams in here which I'll do later I guess and this piece is a drain back valve and yes it does go in that hole and it just drops in there's no orientation just either way so at least I figured out what those things are. Okay, I found the uh, part number to the 2-3 the accumulator spring. Uh, Ford dealership sent me this, this picture here. In case you need any parts, this is the 2-3 uh, the accumulator part numbers. There's the spring, uh, 7F285. It's uh, $11.62 in Canada here. It's going to take a day. It's got to come from across Canada. so. It's, uh, so I imagine in the, uh, the States, it's probably a lot cheaper than that even, so that's, that's a good price. And here's the, uh, uh, this would be the reverse piston and parts. Here's the overdrive. There's the main problem that causes everything. And that's the, uh, the little, uh, here it is here. The retainer clip comes in a package of eight. I guess I'll have to sell those or something. And uh, that's the part number there. Just be careful when I ordered these. Uh, the first time I got this part number with an A at the end. It looked kind of the same, but obviously the wrong retainer clip, so I had to go back and get them to order me another one. That took another day. Uh, something else to mention this uh, valve body cover plate. Um, people talk about the 2-3 uh, the accumulator. Uh, Oh, this is the retaining cover, I guess. I guess it smacks against right here. And they talk about getting spiderweb cracks. Right? Now uh, you can see them. They're actually pretty big on this one. Which, uh, normally you'd replace this plate, cover plate. But, um, I just looked here. And if it was to flex down every time, then yeah, it would definitely break that open. But it actually pushes against this solid metal right here. So they would have to beat it until it actually... I guess goes right through the metal which is easily a couple years away so I'm gonna leave it people might wonder why but it's just getting into the snowball effect with this truck and replacing parts and I imagine in Canada this cover plates probably 60 bucks with the gaskets so uh, I'm not gonna replace I'm not gonna replace it and uh, otherwise then I gotta replace pretty much the bands and the transmission everything's probably worn so I'm only gonna do what I need to do so I gotta wait another another day for that spring. I gotta go find a, uh, I guess a PVC pipe or a dowel or something to go on top of this jack to push up the overdrive piston, so I can pull out the old snap ring and put this one in. Just cut a uh, little wood dowel. Some people use a little PVC pipe, like I said, but uh, this seems like it might work better. And I drilled a little hole at the top to fit over the nut on the piston, which I'll show that in a second. Uh, there's the uh, there's how much fluid came out in the end in the pan. I'm not quite sure the size of that container, but you can get an idea. Um, okay, let's go see if this fits. Oh, and there's the screen that was at the bottom of the pan when I drained it all. That's the one apparently you can throw out. So I'll look online a little longer, but I think I'll throw it out. Okay, here I'll use a jack here, an eight ton jack, a little overkill. And there's the little hole I drilled on top so that it doesn't slip off. Just sit it right on that nut. Put that on the end there. And we'll just uh, 
jack it up. Probably, uh, I'll be careful with this eight ton jack. I'll probably put it up half an inch or something so I can get at that retainer ring. There I uh, put it up by hand. I just did this thing by hand, definitely not with the lever. And uh, I don't put a quarter inch, seemed to get tight after that. I'll try it with just that amount of space. And if not, you know, I'll put it up a bit more. As you put it up, fluid comes out of right here, which is kind of be expected, just wipe it up. Uh, so we'll see if we can get this thing out with some needle noses or something. Oh, I'm pretty happy this morning. I got this uh, snap ring out. Last night I had pretty much decided to leave it in there because it's still pretty intact. You know, probably would probably last another year or two until it broke apart and just do this again if the truck lasts that long. But uh, no, I, uh, I tried for about four hours yesterday and had uh, O-ring picks, every kind of screwdriver and needle nose you could imagine, bent needle noses. And then uh, this morning I went and tried to find a few more tools and it was actually this guy. I got this guy in there. You just got to get a good grip near the end. I got this guy right on the end, tightened her up, and then, uh, where is it? Oh, the O-ring. I just grabbed it. I can't poke. Just near the end of one of those and pulled it, uh, this here. Grabbed it right here, pulled it this way, kind of, and it came out, actually, really easy. I can't believe I spent all that time yesterday doing it. Anyway, it's out, and, uh, now I can snap the new one in there. I guess I gotta take this. I put this back in for some reason. This dipstick comes out here. Make sure you take it out when you're putting the valve body back on or it gets pinched right there. Oh, and uh, make sure you put the, the new one on here first. You could probably bend it and get it around here, but keep this, put this on here before you jack this up because once you get the old one out, you can't drop the piston down. Uh, and then we'll just get the snap ring pliers and chunk it in there. Just thought I might also add that I uh, saw a video last night. If you really can't get this thing out and you're a last resort, um, this little notch right here, you can actually get a Dremel cutoff tool and keep cutting straight up into there until you just get past where the snap ring is. And you could either have the snap ring like this uh, and cut the snap ring in half then it would just fall out both ways. Or what he did was he cut it down till he he put it like this, cut it down till he got past where the snap ring goes, spun this back around, and then just put a screwdriver in there and popped it out. Maybe he was trying to keep it. I don't know. So I would probably cut it in half. Anyway, that's uh that's an extreme option. Then you gotta have to obviously clean all the debris from the cut, but it's an option. Just a uh, quick shot of the uh, two three accumulator spring that I just bought. Uh, there's the old one. All racked up. There's the new one. There's the part number. I'll just show you where it goes. It's pretty obvious, I think. But there's the spring. There's the retainer plate. It goes, sits like that. This sits on there. Slides up. Slides up inside right here. There we have it. And then the spring will just go up in here. This plate goes this way. Just slides up in there. Just gotta make sure the tabs are are tight enough to hold it in place so you can get the valve body and whatnot on there next. Okay, I put the uh, cover plate back on the valve body. Uh, it's nine bolts, I believe, at 90 pounds. Torque them down to 90 inch pounds. Um, then I stuck this valve body back on here, put a few bolts in to hold it. Then I notice. Uh, this guy here has to go exactly in this spot on the shift selector. Just make sure of that. And then this on mine, everybody else seems to just plug this bracket back in no problem. But mine, this, you got to make sure that this thing's facing down. That's a little obvious, but mine was pulled out. Um, well, we're going to zoom back here. That was it. That way it was out and this thing would not go in. So it took me about 10 minutes to figure out that push it in further and then yeah and then this bracket slides in nice so no problem probably just my issue and then we'll just uh, 
torque all these ones down i've read online from anywhere from 90 to 110 so i'm going to do 100 100 uh, inch pounds on them all of them unless i see something in the meantime and then uh filter put the pan on and it's pretty straightforward from here on in there's the actual uh, bolt sequence for the valve body and it says 80 to 98 inch pounds i'll probably do 95 or something and the uh, the tranny pan, when you put it back on, it averages, the average I get is uh, 120 inch pounds for that one in a, and doing it in a crisscross pattern. Okay, pan is back on. Uh, now we fill it with six quarts of Mercon 5 or V and uh, leave it in park. That's pretty important. Just leave it in park until and keep filling and checking until it's at the right level. Then you can shift through the gears and check it out. <laughs> Uh, while you're under here, I oh know I needed to do this. Your transfer case, you should check the inner seal to this thing always goes between the transmission and here. So if you pop this nut out um, and stuff starts flowing out, that means your seal's going. And uh, the fluid from the tranny's mixing with this, which is actually not a good thing because that's the tranny takes Mercon 5 and this takes Mercon LV. Originally, it was just straight Mercon, but now they Ford recommends uh, Mercon LV, which they don't actually go together good. So, uh, and this I don't think has been changed ever in mine. So, I uh, I put some Mercon LV, some new stuff in there. It was looking pretty ugly. So uh, first check it, see if if because this is the fill level. So if it's perfectly low with this, then everything's good. If you take that out, it pours out, then it's leaking through the seal, which I'm gonna leave for a while. I just put some uh, Lucas. Uh, seal fix in a tranny also and uh, we'll see if that maybe cures my problem or if it's a slow leak who cares uh, so then yeah otherwise the drain is here and then uh, plug it back in and fill it up with Mercon LV oh and it uh, takes two liters just under two liters mine took or two quarts pretty much the same thing and that is it. I ended up adding uh, 10 liters uh, in the end. And it's just on the cold level, so I'll have to take it for a boot and uh, and uh, check it a few more times. But yeah, 10 liters. And uh, I just use this basic stuff. Where I'm in Canada, it was hard to find anything, uh, any good compatible stuff. I couldn't find AMSOIL and stuff, so I just stuck with some basic Mercon 5. And uh, for the transfer case, this was looked pretty good so I got this it was two liters of this for the transfer case and uh, 10 for that so if the uh, test drive doesn't go good tomorrow and uh, I'll add to the video otherwise uh, that's it thanks for watching